name. So what happens? They got baptized in Jesus' name. They had not received the gift of the Holy Ghost, so they were prayed for, and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. So if you're a believer out there, please be paying attention. If you're a believer out there, and you're watching this, if you believe, that's great. But if you believe, why don't you repent? And why don't you get baptized? And why don't you get the Holy Ghost evidence of speaking in other tongues? Can I get an amen? Someone should get excited about that. Woo! For example, believing is great, and I want people to believe, but belief should lead to action. And if we don't take action, how much do we believe? I'll give you an example that I use all the time in Bible studies. Have I already done this in church before about the $100 bill? I have, haven't I? I'll do it again. Who remembers, who remembers it? Who should I use as, as my victim? Her? You want 100 bucks? You don't? Well, psh, cool. Josh wants a hundred bucks. I promise you if I handed Josh a hundred bucks, he'd go, would you want a hundred bucks? Don't think you're getting one. I'm just using an example, okay? <laughs> but Josh likes money. He'd probably go buy some video games and a bunch of stuff. If I took a hundred dollar bill and put it under the placemat of my vehicle, lock the car and walk away, and I come into the church and say, Josh, I got $100 for you in my vehicle. Yeah, I've done this before because I remember Paula was here when I did it. She was over here. I'm feeling the experience before. I'm having deja vu. I say, Josh, it's yours. I'm 100 bucks. You know, you're just such a stellar child. And, and mom has been talking so good about your behavior. And I just want to bless you with a blessing, a love offering of 100 bucks. There it is in my car. Now, what could he do with it right here? Well, why not? It's his. I gave it to him. It's his. It's his promise. I'm the pastor. If, if I did that, I wouldn't be lying. Oh, what'd you say, sister? It's not in his possession and he has to go get it. It doesn't do him any good while he's sitting right here. Let me ask you, do you believe it's yours? Do you believe it's yours? Do you believe me when I say it's yours? So he believes. He believes it's his. It's out there and he's in here. It does, he can't benefit from that hundred dollars one bit. I don't care how much he believes he can spend it. He can believe it all the way to, to, to nowhere because he's not getting anything. He, he can't, but see, he can have a little imagination and believe he's in the store and believe he's buying something. But when he opens his eyes, he's got nothing. Now, Josh, if you really believe that that money is yours, Josh will say, well, pastor, can I have the keys to your truck? So he's going to come over and get the keys. You know what? The keys, the Bible talks about keys. It says Peter was given the keys of the kingdom. What are those keys? You repent, you get baptized, get the Holy Ghost. If you believe, Josh, you'll come get the keys. You'll hit the button. You'll open the car. You know what's so funny? He can hit that button and stand there. And if he never opened the car door, he's there outside the car. The car is open and he can't get the money. Why? Because he's got to open the door. But even once he opens the door and he's standing there and he's looking at the floor mat, he still can't get the money. He can grab that floor mat all day long and unless he's the invisible man or Houdini or something, he can put his hands through the mat. It's still not his. What does he have to do? He has to lift up the mat. You know what's so funny? I'm having so much fun right now. Because even if he lifts up the mat, now he can just see it. He still can't have it until he does what? Until he picks it up and puts it in his pocket. He can spend it all day long now. Now he has the money. It's his and he can go do what he wants with it. Are you feeling me? Are you understanding? Even when he did all that, even when he walked to the car, hit the alarm, opened the car door, lifted the mat, he still can't get it. So what in the world is wrong with saying you've got to repent. You've got to turn from your sin. Because if you don't turn from your sin, you're not going to receive the Holy Ghost. God will not fill you. He says that the spirit of flesh cannot mix. They're enemies. So yes, you have to repent. Or you can't get God. You can't be in relationship with him. Sin separates you from God. You know what? If you don't get baptized, you can't have your sin washed away. So he, you could have repented and said, God, I'm going to turn from my sin, but you still got all the sin you committed from the day you were born. Just because you turn from your old sin doesn't mean it's gone. It's got to be washed away, church. You got to have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life. But even when you do that, you've repented, turned from your sin. Now you got baptized. You've left sin behind. You've got all your sin washed away, but you don't have the Holy Ghost. Somebody turn to... 
Corinthians chapter 8. I'm telling you, this is so much fun. It's not even funny. You repent. You get baptized. Just wash away your sin. Blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life. But you don't have the Holy Ghost. And you need the Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you why. In Corinthians 8 verse. Let me see your Bible. You there? Uh, that's a good question. I believe it's first. Thank you. First Corinthians chapter 8. Verse 6. You, can you read that, sister? Just read it real quick. Sister, v, sister Veronica. I almost called her V2. Nope, it's 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I'm sorry, what, what am I thinking? I'm sorry, I must, that Holy Ghost must have me high right now. It's Romans chapter 8. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Romans chapter 8, yes. I must, be, I must be excited, man. I'll tell you what, I'm all in the wrong book. And I know that one, like, that's, that's one of my key scriptures, man. I got, whew. Romans chapter 8, I think it's 5. Some, huh? Romans 8, yeah, read, read that for me. Romans 8, 8. Spirit Christ. I want everybody to be there right now. Everybody who has a book in front of them, look at Romans 8.8 8 right now. So clear. There should be no problem with the understanding. Listen, if you, if you don't get repented, you're not turned from your sin. You don't get baptized, you haven't washed away your sin. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you are none of His. But why? Because you need that power. That's just like saying, if you have a car, it doesn't have a motor, it does you no good. It's just a shell. You have a car that has a motor with no gas. It's still a powerful shell. You can repent. You can get baptized. But if you haven't received the Holy Ghost, you are none of His. You can't be His. You haven't put Him on. If you don't get baptized, as you put on Christ when you get baptized. You haven't put Him on if you haven't been baptized. And you don't have Him in you and you're not His. You're not a property or possession of Jesus if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I love the Word of God. It is so clear. It's, you know what? I've just decided since I came to church. See, when I came to church, I'm an ex-drug addict. I'm somebody who was addicted, addicted. I was addicted to drugs. I told you I'm high. The Holy Ghost got me bud. Y'all should try it. It's, it's free and it's not even sinful. I was addicted to drugs and alcohol. And so when I was involved in that position, I was in bondage. I was broken. I couldn't survive. I couldn't succeed. But I needed power to get out. I needed power to say, I want to make a decision to leave sin behind. That's a decision that we need some power to make. You know what, I've just decided that it's all right. Ever since I came to the church, I was so destroyed by drugs and alcohol and the lust of the flesh that I just made a decision that whatever the Bible says, that's what I need to do. I'm not going to argue with the Word of God, and I don't care that God may have some expectations from me. I have expectations of my children, and if he's my dad, then why should I be upset? Because he expects me to do something. Oh, but we want to have a, a candy store, God, where I can do whatever I want and call myself a Christian and still be saved. Or I can not do whatever I want. I can choose the salvation. You know, we've gotten this arrogance to say that I'm going to accept you, therefore I'm saved. I'm going to decide that I'm saved because I said so. Without the requirements completed that God put on us. Please, if you're a person from the modern day Christian church, I'm under the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now, so please don't be offended. That's arrogant to say, I'm going to decide when I'm saved, whether I've done what the Bible says or not. Don't be offended. Change. Don't be offended. Make a change. Adapt yourself. Was, was conform yourself to the Word of God. We need to be conformed to it. We don't need to try to conform God to our desires. Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, God is good. 
Oh, it's right here. I got a Romans 8. Hey, I'm just preaching. Can I have some fun here? Let's stand right now. Let's stand. What I need the church to do is to make a decision. You know, I know it's a Wednesday and, you know, I don't think I preach too long. But I'd like for us to just, right now, and, and for the next couple services, to put some serious focus on the Holy Ghost. If you're a young person, hear me close. If you're a young person and you want the Holy Ghost, raise your hand. If you're a young person and you want the Holy Ghost, a lot of young people said they didn't have the Holy Ghost. He wants it. He wants it. He wants it. She wants it. He wants it. Okay, well you little girl, she wants it. You don't even know what you're asking for, girl. You want it? Aim. You don't know. Okay. Yes. Make up your mind. The little ones, we'll teach them later. But understand, there's a way that you get the Holy Ghost just like you get that $100 bill. You got to want it. See, I have an education because I wanted it bad enough. So I did the work to go get it. I took action. I wanted to lose some weight. I've lost 13 pounds, not just by sitting around eating bonbons. I took action and I started doing something about it. I'm here to tell you, if you want the Holy Ghost, or if you want to be refilled, or you want more of the Holy Ghost, oh, can I preach? Can I preach without you being offended? I'm just feeling a little bit of Holy Ghost right now. Can you take it? You got some thick skin? Some of you wonder why you're not getting filled with the Holy Ghost and you're sitting in your seat watching other people come up here and get filled. You're watching other people come down here and bless and you're wondering why you don't get nothing. Because you haven't gone out to the car to get your reward. You haven't gone out to get your money. You haven't gone out to get what it is that you want. You have got to take a step forward. God can bless you at your seat, but why sit there and wait for him when God's saying, come on. You ever see, the, you know, I remember when my was his son Ezekiel first started walking. You should have seen me. I was like a oh, white lady in church. Like, oh, come on! Oh, come on! I was so excited. And he was just, uh, 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 uh. And I'm, come on, yeah, you got it! That's what God is like. He's sitting up here saying, listen, I can touch you over there and, and you can feel me, but come on down here and learn how to walk. Come on, come on, daddy's waiting for you. Come on, come on, you can do it. Come on, take another step. Come on, you can do it. I'm, there's something here for you and you'll love it. Praise God. I'm telling you right now, the Lord wants you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He wants you to have the Holy Ghost more than you want it. But I believe this church needs to start taking some action. If you're watching from online, if you're not in a place where they don't allow you to jump and shout and raise your hand and cry in church, maybe you should find yourself a good old-fashioned Pentecostal church that gives you freedom and liberty to worship. We got some space. We got some room for you. But I'm here to tell you, I believe we've got to start taking some action, church. For today and for these next few services, we don't need to stay in our seat. You've been in church too long to be sitting there. See, you didn't get the Holy Ghost sitting in your chair, most of you. You came down to the altar and sought out God. We need to continue to seek out God. God says, draw nigh on to me, and I will draw nigh on to you. It's a two-way street. Let's go ahead and do that. These altars are open. I want to see who wants some Holy Ghost. If you've already got the Holy Ghost and you're a faithful member or a leader in the church, you need to come down and so this place is not empty. So people can feel more comfortable. Some people might be shy and afraid to come down. Let's bring some people who are not shy and who are seeking God to make it a comfortable.